Hi there! I have another empties video to do. I haven't done one in quite some time and so I have 35 makeup empties to share with you and it's gotten to a point where I actually have multiples from each makeup category and so I thought I would do things a little bit differently today and compare those head to head and have almost like a sudden death challenge or something like that where I'm comparing the products across the categories and I choose which one is the best. I do have a few products where I only have one in that category. I'll save those to the end and I'm not going to go in any particular order. For the first time ever, I'm not going to take everything out and sort it into categories because I already have it sorted. Alright, I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm just going to take whatever is in front of me. I do have two lip gloss empties. The first one is the Bare Minerals Mineralist Lip Gloss Balm and this is in the shade Vision. And I also have the Lip Bath from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Pillow Talk. For both of these, I did take out the stopper, use a little bit more, and then put the stopper back in. So they are pretty empty. I did empty them out <laughs> both quite a bit. For the Mineralist Gloss Balm, it took 158 uses to finish. And the Lip Bath from Charlotte Tilbury takes about 263 uses to finish. So you do get quite a few more uses out of the Charlotte Tilbury gloss, but I am glad to hear that because it is more expensive as well. The lip bath from Charlotte Tilbury retails for $35 and the Bare Minerals gloss is $20 or $22 depending on where you get it. I love the lip baths. I've gone through multiples of these. I have one more in my collection, I think, and that one is almost gone. And I just love how thick it is. And it does have a little bit of a, min a minty taste and smell, but it's not very strong. And I do look past it because I do really love the formula. And this is my gym proof test. I wear it before I take a spin class or something and it stays on for the entirety of the class. Even while I'm like sweating and wiping my face, it stays on and keeps my lips from getting too dry. <laughs> the other one that I have of this left in my collection is in my gym bag for that reason and I just really love it. I do have a lot of glosses out there that I want to try so I'm not going to purchase any more of these anytime soon but these are a tried and true favorite. If you're looking for a more affordable alternative to these, the Milani glosses are pretty similar. They're just the slightest bit thinner. They're not as thick as this one and they do feel a little bit more minty. So just keep that in mind but they are like a third of the price. The one from Bare Minerals, I really liked this. The shade Vision didn't have any glitter in it. Uh, some of the shades do so just keep that in mind. Same with the lip baths. This had a sweet sugary smell to it but it didn't really taste like anything and I did like how nourishing this felt. It was uh, something that wasn't too thick but it didn't feel slippery. It didn't feel like it was going to go away right away. This one I feel like I would put it on and even after it like wore away my lips didn't feel dry. Sometimes that would happen with this one from Bare Minerals. So definitely prefer the lip bath, but I, I think these are both great and I enjoyed wearing them until they were finished. Now I have two brow pencils here. One is from Milani. It's the Precision Brow in the shade Taupe and then the Cover Girl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade Honey Brown. And the Cover Girl Brow Pencil took 62 uses to finish and the one from Milani took 67 uses to finish, so right about the same amount of uses. I preferred the Milani one because the shade Taupe, it was a little bit more of a neutral cool color, and then Honey Brown was just the slightest bit warmer, which makes sense. The one from Milani is just a little stiffer. The CoverGirl one, I feel like I had to make sure I was using a lighter hand because if you press too hard, it will deposit a lot, and I don't really go for really heavy brows or really dark brows and um, I just felt like I didn't have to be as careful with the Milani one. These are both great though. I liked both of them a lot um, but the Milani one wins if I'm putting these two head to head. Setting sprays. I have three. I have the Urban Decay All Nighter, the Cover Color Pop No Filter, and the Besame Jasmine Mist. And I will say the ranking is All Nighter is number one, Color Pop's number two, Besame is dead last. I didn't care for this. <laughs> um, I got this as a free gift with purchase, so I didn't buy it myself, but it's one of those products that I had always wanted to try. And so when it came in like a mystery bag, I was really excited to try it out. And so I had really high expectations for it. Number one, this is like 30 something dollars. Yeah, it's $32 and you get 1.08 fluid ounces or 32 mils. So you get essentially one ounce, which is 
way less than you normally get in other setting sprays. This one from Urban Decay is four ounces. Usually setting sprays are like two, three, four ounces. So this is essentially as expensive as an Urban Decay setting spray, but it's like a fourth of the size. And as a result, I only wore it 33 times before it was gone. I love the packaging. It's in a glass bottle and the spray was really nice. It was even, and I didn't feel like I needed a ton of sprays to cover my face. Probably three or four sprays was more than enough, even less than that if I put it in like the exact right spot. This smells so fragrant. I'm assuming it smells like jasmine. I don't know what jasmine smells like, but it did have a very, very heavy floral scent, almost like I was spraying a body spray on my face. Just one step below that is how it felt. It's the Refresh and Said Jasmine Mist, so it's not saying that it's like super mattifying or it's gonna make my makeup last 12 plus hours. It doesn't have any outrageous claims like that. So I do think it performed how it says it would perform. It did help take the powder look down. It did look nice on my skin. I don't find that it made me look more oily throughout the day. Yeah, I wouldn't say it did a ton to make my makeup last a lot longer, but I do think it was a good setting spray. Um, just like the ColourPop one. I feel like these had similar performances in that way, um, but it was just so fragrant. Did not care for that. So this one is in last place. The next one is a little bit better, but still not something I would recommend you going and trying. Uh, the No Filter Setting Mist. I showed this in my project pan this year, so you have seen me talk about this time and time again if you watch those videos. And I went from really not liking it to just being okay with it, okay enough to finish it but definitely not something I'm gonna get again. This one smelled like Lemon Pledge. If you don't have Lemon Pledge where you live, it's like a waxy cleaner that you use on wood and it smells very lemony and that's what this smells like. It also had sediment on the bottom. I think it was supposed to be a powder to help it be more mattifying. I ended up taking that out pretty early on because I didn't really like it and I didn't feel like it was doing anything. And after I took it out, I did find that I liked it better. But yeah, this was, just okay. I would I would definitely not get this again or recommend it. I will say though, this is $12 and I got 128 uses out of it. So that's pretty good. And then of course, Old Reliable, the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I love this. I just bought two more in a little duo that they usually come out with during the holidays. And it's just my go-to. I, I always know it's going to work for me. And um, yeah, I feel like I've been talking about this since I started my channel, which was like six or seven years ago. So you know it's good. And whenever I first tracked the uses, whenever I first started my channel, I think I got like 56 uses out of it. I think I would get a lot more out of it now because back then I was wearing a ton of setting spray. And nowadays, I still use setting spray every day, but I don't use as many sprays each time. And so I do think I get more than 56 uses out of this. And like I said, I usually buy it when it's part of that duo, which makes it half of the price than it is normally. So I get two for like 35 bucks. And so um, the use, cost per use is pretty reasonable, especially considering how much I like to use it. I have three mascaras here, two minis and a full size. The full size is the Smashbox Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara. And I got this one when it was half off during one of the Ulta sales. And then this is a mini M Cosmetics Pick Me Up Mascara. And then I have a mini deluxe size of the Tarte Man Eater. M Cosmetics comes dead last. Didn't like this at all. I think I wore it for like two months and then I couldn't do it anymore, which I'm surprised because I do like these types of plastic bristle brushes. The brush itself did a good job at separating my lashes, but the formula was so sticky and heavy and wet that it would clump them together. And it was heavy, so it would drag my lashes down. And so even when I was applying it at first, it was still clumped together, heavy, and weighed down. And then on top of that, it would just do that even more throughout the day. So it looked like I had no lashes towards the end of the day. I also remember this not being the easiest thing to take off at the end of the day either would not recommend it, didn't like it, and I'm glad I only had a mini of it. And honestly, 
honestly, the Smashbox and Tarte mascaras, I would kind of make them a tie. Maybe the Man Eater would win over the Smashbox because it was a little bit easier to remove at the end of the day. The Smashbox also had a plastic bristle brush, which I prefer over the natural brush bristle brushes or the really big fluffy ones. This is a good natural mascara, like it combs through and tints your lashes and brings them up a little bit, but it's not super volumizing. And I do like that for most days. Like I don't need the heaviest, thickest lashes on a regular basis. So I did really like this, but again, it was just a teeny bit harder to remove at the end of the day than the Man Eater. I really liked this one. I wouldn't go out and buy the full size. I was more than happy to have the mini and wear it and I liked it. And this again has the spiky rubber bristle brushes. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, this was good. I liked it a lot. Um, I just really like that sort of brush because I feel like it does help separate my lashes. And when they're separated and kind of each getting a chance to do their own thing, I do think it looks like I have more lashes than I actually do because I don't really. And they're very thin and blonde. I will say I am wearing the Pillow Talk mascara right now from Charlotte Tilbury and I love it. It's one of my favorite mascaras. I am having a little bit of trouble with transferring. Like it transfers on one of my eyes, not the other one, just one. And so I'm wondering if it's because I've been wearing heavier eye creams or I'm not sure. I don't think it's the mascara's fault though, but I just wanted to mention that. I have four primers. Normally I don't go through primers that fast, but three of them are minis. And I have the e.l.f. Woe Glow, the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Pore Primer, the Too Faced Peach and Primey Primer, Too Faced Peach, Too Faced Primed and Peachy Primer, and the Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Youth Glow. I would say that the e.l.f. Woe Glow was my least favorite. I did like that I had an SPF. So this is what it looked like. I was able to get a little bit out to put on my hand. So it has a little bit of like a yellowy tint to it. This absolutely smelled like sunscreen. It's SPF 30, which I really like, um, but it does say Woe Glow in the name, and I do agree. I do think it was um, relatively glowy, not a watery sunscreen type of feel. Like it definitely felt like something, felt like you were putting it on your skin. I thought that this was just okay, I'll be honest. I know some people really love it, but I don't go for overtly glowy, heavy makeup like that, or heavy feeling makeup, I should say. So this was okay, but I'm just glad I got the little one. Although this little, what is this? It doesn't even tell me how big this is but it's tiny, you can see that. Uh, this was $5, just for this little thing. My next favorite is the Too Faced Primed and Peachy. I have, I think this is my last one of this. I had like two or three of the minis because they stopped selling this and I wanted to get a couple as backup before they were completely gone. And it says it's cooling matte and I do agree, when you first start using it, it does have a slight cooling feeling to it. That kind of goes away after you have it for so long. I will say this was mattifying, not the most mattifying primer I've ever tried. I will talk about one that I think is even better in a minute. But this one felt soft, like you put it on and it didn't feel heavy or silicone-y. And once you rubbed it in, it kind of dried down and then didn't feel like anything on the skin, which I really love. So this was good. I'm glad I had a couple minis. I was more than happy to wear them and work through them before they expired. But I don't even think you can get this anymore. And even if you could, I don't think I'd buy it again. I have other mattifying primers that I prefer, including this one from Tarte. This is a mini of their Timeless Smoothing Primer. Let me go back for a second. The e.l.f. Woe Glow only took 13 uses to finish. The Too Faced one took 61 uses to finish. And this one from Tarte took 58 uses to finish. And I really loved it. If I were to get it again, which I might for like special occasions, I would probably still just go with the mini because you do get almost 60 uses out of it. And this isn't something I feel like I need to wear every single day. I'm not that worried about oil control and mattifying my face 
that I need to have something this heavy duty every single day, but it is something I can rely on, just like the all-nighter. I don't have to use this every day, but when I need my makeup to last and I don't wanna get too greasy, I know what products I can rely on to do that. This one definitely did feel silicone-y. I would just put it in select parts of my face where I knew I got oily, like in my T-zone. I didn't need to put it all over my skin and you can apply too much, so you just have to start with a little bit. Working in sections, really working it into the skin. This was very good. I would absolutely consider getting another one of these. And then my favorite, I just really liked this and I liked it more as I wore it because I had it in a project pan. That's the Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Youth Glow. It said it's a brightening color correcting glow primer. I don't know what the color correcting aspect was because it was a light cream color in the jar or in the tube and then it was really watery. So then you put it on your skin and it didn't really show up as anything on your skin. And of course I'm speaking, when I'm talking about what things look like on the skin, I am very pale so if it did have a little bit of a white cast or something i'm not sure if i'm the best person to know that i was able to get a little bit out on my hand um i don't know if that makes it easier to see or not um but i just really loved the texture of this and i like the scent of it I can't explain what that scent is, but it just smells really nice and luxurious. It had just the slightest slippery feeling and then it would dry down and not feel like anything on the skin. Again, I really liked that. I'm pretty sure I wore this on my wedding day and I, even though it doesn't necessarily say it, I do think it helped with the longevity of my makeup. And this is like 50 something dollars. Yeah, this is a $55. I don't know if it's that amazing that I'm gonna go <laughs> buy it again, really, even though it was very much a treat to wear. And I do have another one that I think is super similar. I have the Wonder Glow, which is also from Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like these are very, very similar. The only main difference is, you know, the color of the Wonder Glow is a little bit more of a golden color. And this one does have a slight little bit of a sparkle in it. Nothing chunky, nothing super noticeable but there is that main difference between the two, but they are so similar. They smell the same, they feel the same, they perform the same. So I'm very glad to have this still in my collection. Um, and maybe I'll sing a different tune once this one's gone and maybe I'll really miss it and want to get it again. I was just very pleasantly surprised with this. It's not very often that I get that excited about a primer. And that Charlotte Tilbury primer took 138 uses to finish. Let's go back to lip products for a second. I have the Hourglass Volumizing Phantom Glossy Lip Balm in the shade Mist. I have a mini of the Maracuja Juicy Lip from Tarte. This is in the shade Rose. And then I have the Ulta Beauty Gloss Stick in the shade Chill Pill. And these are all like in stick form and they're slightly tinted, but they're more moisturizing than a traditional lipstick. And this one's tough because I really liked all three of these. But for the sake of ranking, I am going to put Hourglass at the bottom, even though I did really like this. Hear me out. This is $36. It took 75 uses to finish. And so if you do the math, that comes out to 48 cents per use. I'm spending half of a dollar every time I apply this. And even though it was beautiful and I really liked the color, I'm not sure if you can still see the color because I really did dig out. I wanted to make sure I got everything I could out of here. Um, it was a really light peachy color. It was beautiful, but it was really just like a really nice slightly tinted lip balm. Like it wasn't anything spectacular. I did feature this in Lip Mist last year and I talked about it more in depth. And so if you wanted to see a swatch and what it looked like on the lips and more in depth information about it, I will have that linked. This was really just okay. Like I enjoyed it, but it's $36. I'm not gonna buy it again. Second place is Tarte. I liked this color a lot too. It was a really nice light pinky shade. It was very moisturizing, a little more moisturizing than the Hourglass one. I understand why people hype them up so much. I have tried the plumping version of this and that one is a little too minty for my taste. So if I'm gonna choose between those two, I'm definitely just going for the regular one. I kind of want to try the cream version that they've come out with and I think they also have like a color changing pH line of these as well. The only thing that really holds me back from this is it has a very, very strong coconut scent. 
and sometimes a coconut taste. And that's fine, but I'm not always in the mood for that, honestly. I would rather lip products, if they're not gonna have like a slight vanilla scent and taste, I'd rather them not have anything at all. This took 56 uses to finish, but keep in mind that this is a mini. I think I like the packaging of the minis better because they are just twist up versus I think the full size are like clicky pens. I've heard that those break pretty often. And so I don't wanna buy a full size of something and then not even be able to get to use everything out of it. And lastly, something I don't love about it is you have to be really careful when you do twist it up because if you twist up too much and you try to apply it, all of it will come off onto your lips. So it's super easy to over apply. You always have to be kind of careful with this, especially if you're trying to wear it in the warmer months, the product heats up and then it gets even more melty and it can get a little bit messy if you're not careful. This one from Ulta. I have no complaints. This is in the shade Chill Pill, which is a beautiful lip color for me. It's almost the exact same color as my lips, maybe just a tiny bit more cool purple. And again, this was featured in Litmus. All three of these lip products were. Actually, all of my lip products that I talked about today were featured in Litmus, except for one of the lip liners that I'll talk about in a, in a little bit. I love how this feels very lightweight. It does feel very thin but it is long lasting and I do actually feel like it nourished my lips. If my lips were a little chapped or a little dry feeling and I put this on, it lasted several hours and it actually made my lips feel like I was doing something to help them. <laughs> like they felt like they were being protected and nourished. And sometimes really thin lip products don't do that. They wear away really fast and then they make your lips feel drier as they wear away. This one didn't do that. They do have several colors of this. I would absolutely consider purchasing this again. I loved it the more I used it. And that Ulta Gloss Stick took 96 uses to finish. Two eyeliners. This isn't really a fair comparison because one is a pencil liner, which I prefer, and the other one is a liquid liner pen. I have the ColourPop liner in the shade Numero Uno, which was a black. And I did like it. I don't wear these types of eyeliners all the time. Um, so this lasted me several years before it dried up, which was really great. And then um, definitely the winner between the two is this one from Essence. It's the long lasting 16 hour wear waterproof eyeliner in the shade Black Love, I think was the name. This is like three or $4 and it took 156 uses to finish. And I really love this and I have the shade Buffers Espresso in the same formula, which is a little bit more of a dark brown. And I just love it. You put it on, it's super, super creamy. And then as you blend it out or as you let it set, it stays put. I do think it is long lasting. If I blend it out and if I'm careful, it won't transfer to the lower lash line, but I have yet to find like a perfectly transfer proof eyeliner. My eyes are very watery and so I think it's just harder for me to find formulas like that. But for the price, for the amount of use I get out of it and for the way it looks, I love it. It's smudgeable, it's blendable, but then it really sets and it's just got a beautiful pigment to it. Hidden gem at the drugstore. Two highlighter products. Again, not a very fair comparison because one is a liquid and one is a powder. I finally finished the Filmstar Bronze and Glow Highlighter from the duo and oh my goodness, this took 303 uses to finish. I did hit pan on it after 93 uses and then it took over 200 more uses to actually finish it. I love it. I think this is a beautiful formula. Even after all these years, it's blendable. It is skin-like. If you apply it with a light hand, you can make it look really natural and then take it up a couple notches by reapplying and making it very, very shiny. And I just loved it. This was such a treat to wear. The packaging is still beautiful. I think I might repurpose it for something else. And I'm glad that such an expensive product did take so many uses to finish. And the one from Milani, this is the Conceal and Perfect in the shade Lunar. And this one I used as a mixer with my liquid lipsticks to make cream blushes. And I wore it for the last time today. And I am wearing another liquid highlighter on top. But um, this is really nice. It was a light gold color. And I have a few other liquid highlighters that I'm gonna go through. Overall, there's really nothing super special about this. So, you know, even though I did enjoy it and I got 99 uses out of it, I don't feel like I need to run out and purchase it again. Like it's relatively replaceable in the way that I use it. So the Charlotte Tilbury one is a clear winner in that one. 
All right, the next one is bronzer contour products. I have the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand in the shade light medium. And then I have this one from Bare Minerals. This is the invisible bronze in fair to light. They don't make the Bare Minerals one anymore, but this was a baked product and it was beautiful. It reminded me a lot of the um, bronzer formula or the powder formula from Hourglass where it's baked and it's really blendable and natural and skin-like. It has a little bit of a healthy glow to it. Really big fan. Um, yeah, I'm sad that they don't make it anymore because I think it's really nice. And then the contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury. I wore it more as like a little bit of a contouring shade. And then on top of that, sometimes I would take a little bit of it on like my sponge if I had any left over and I would put it on top of my cheekbones and it would help bring out my freckles. Something about just dotting it on top of my foundation helped them to be a little bit more visible. So I thought that was a really beautiful way to wear it because then it just made my skin and my foundation look even more natural and skin-like. The Bare Mineral one, the Bare Mineral rule, the Bare Minerals one, <laughs> I would definitely buy again if they still made it. I thought it was a beautiful formula. And I really liked the contour one too. The price is holding me back a little bit. $38. That being said, I did get 178 uses out of it. I really didn't use a ton of it every single time. And even though it did look very dark when you first applied it, it's got a little bit more of like a sheer watery formula. So it's not super creamy and thick. And once it dried, it didn't feel like anything. Sometimes cream bronzers and contours can, can feel a little heavy. This never felt like that and it was very blendable. Like you almost couldn't overdo it with this product. So the formula is beautiful. I liked that I was able to get so many uses out of it and I really liked the way I wore it, but I'm not running out and buying it again. I'll say that. They're both winners, but I say if I had to choose one, I did like the contour wand just a little bit better. Now for concealer and color correcting products, I have the Sigma Duo in the shade light to medium, and I have a mini of the Hourglass Concealer, and this was in the shade Cedar. The Hourglass Concealer, surprisingly, I got 64 uses out of it before it was gone. I did take the stopper out, but you only needed the tiniest little bit. It was so pigmented that I really feel like this went a long way. I feel like the full size would take absolutely forever to go through. The Sigma one was the opposite. I did keep track of both sides, how many uses it took to finish each of them and how long it took to hit pan. For the lighter side, it only took 16 uses to hit pan on it and it took 57 uses total to finish. And then the slightly darker side, I hit pan after, after 18 uses and it took 61 uses to finish. So total, just around 120 uses to finish the entire thing and i think this is like 32 dollars so you really don't get a ton of product out of here i hear people talking about that all the time there just isn't a lot in here but i loved the formula i really liked this a lot and it wasn't so peachy or pink that i couldn't just wear it as a concealer on its own if i wanted something a little bit more natural that day the hourglass one took a lot long time for me to figure out because I really love creamy concealers. I had just finished the Kosas concealer before going for this one. That one is super creamy, a lot more skin-like, and I just really like that one so much. And so I, when I started wearing this one, it was just a shock because you did not need nearly as much. And I feel like the first couple of times I used it, I kept applying too much because I was just so used to the Kosas concealer. Eventually I figured it out, but even so, it just looked a little bit drier under my eyes. This is fantastic if you like to wear full coverage faces all together, like you like a full coverage foundation look and you want something that's long lasting. This is an incredibly long lasting concealer. There were several occasions where my face makeup, my foundation would break down and I'd be oily and it would start to show and this would still look exactly like how it looked when I first applied it. So this has a place, it's very good in its own way, but it's not my style, it's not my preference. So definitely I prefer the Sigma one over the Hourglass. The last head-to-head -head category I have is powders and blotting products. So I have a loose powder from Essence. This is the Loose Fixing Powder Instant Blur Effect Natural Matte Finish in the shade Light. And then I have a replaceable pan, refillable pan of the Besame Violet Powder. And then I have blotting sheets from M Cosmetics. And I've been getting back into blotting sheets lately. I have some from Winky Lux that I love. I did like the blotting sheets from M Cosmetics, but 
they're kind of expensive for what they are, like they're not that special. I definitely prefer the Winky Lux over the M Cosmetics ones just because they do relatively the same thing, but it's a lot more affordable to get the Winky Lux. The M Cosmetics ones only are 50 sheets and the Winky Lux are 100 sheets and they're more affordable than the M Cosmetics one. But I did want to put them in here because I wanted to mention I'm really loving blotting powders lately. I just think whenever I'm touching up throughout the day, it's a lot easier to remove the oil than to just put more powder on top of an already oily base. So while this was good, I would put it in the bottom category just because it is very expensive for what it is. And then the next one would have to be Essence. Actually, no, I'm gonna put Essence in last place and M Cosmetics in second place. I didn't like this because it did have a tint to it, I thought it would be kind of like a translucent powder, maybe skin toned at least, but it had kind of like a yellowy peachy undertone that just did not match me very well. It says it has a natural matte finish. I feel like it really didn't help me stay matte throughout the day. It was a decent setting powder, but it was a little bit thicker and so I definitely could see it on my skin. I just prefer the translucent HD powders, so I should have known better. Um, and I will keep that in mind when buying powders in the future. I definitely just prefer the translucent powders over ones that do have a tint to them. Um, it also went very quickly. It only took 59 uses to finish. And even though it is more affordable, I just feel like that is not very long. It's like two months of daily use and it's gone. <laughs> so didn't really love that. I didn't really love the finish or the color of it. And I didn't feel like it really helped me stay matte throughout the day. So definitely wouldn't. Uh, recommend this definitely in third place and then M Cosmetics is in second place and then first place is the violet powder I do sometimes use this to like set my t-zone but I mostly use this to set my concealer and I really love the formula it's very lightweight but it does a good job at actually setting my concealer I can't have tacky concealer under my eyes or else my mascara will transfer horribly no matter what mascara it is and it'll crease. I just, I need it to be powdered down. I need it to be matte under there. And so this does a really great job doing that. I've gone through several of these. I have another one in my collection and I did recently try the, I think it was the Peggy. I think it's called the Peggy version, which is a yellow version of that powder. And this one is a lot thicker of a powder and I feel like it has more kick up. And so I have to be very careful or else I'll put way too much under my eyes. The violet one, for some reason, just something in that formula, maybe it's harder pressed or what, I'm not sure, but it just looks so much nicer under the eyes. It doesn't look heavy or thick, but it does do a good job at setting my concealer and having that little bit of a violet undertone does help to brighten that area. I do have a few products that are in their own category. I don't have them anything to compare them to, so I'll quickly go through those. I have the hashtag this is everything mix balms. I have gone through so many of these. I love them. They are very nice everyday balms. I recently bought the Summer Fridays Vanilla Balm. I went through an entire tube of that last year and I loved it. It's much thicker than this one from NYX and I just really prefer that. So I'm not buying any more of these. I think I have one more left in my collection and then I'll probably take a little bit of a break. There are lots of really good balms out there. I have a brow gel here from Essence and this was the Blondie Brows make me brow and it's a tinted eyebrow gel with fibers in it i love how small the handle is i've gone through several of these i'm wearing one right now from nyx the thicket stick it i don't like it as much it's a little bit too much for what i like to put in my brows and then i have one from milk which is just a clear brow gel and that one's okay but i just really love the elf one like once those two are gone, I'm gonna go back to this one. I have a single eyeshadow here from ColourPop. This was from the Go and Coconuts palette and it was in the shade Shredded, which was a matte cream powder. And I used it to set my eyeshadow primer mostly, but I really liked this. Not all matte cream shadows are created equal. Some of them are very thin and almost translucent. And they don't really do much. They'll set your eyeshadow primer if that's what you want it to do, but it won't have any other used to it. This one was pigmented enough that it actually uh, brightened my eyelids and I would sometimes also use a little bit of on it on my lower lash line just to brighten up that right on the bottom of my lashes. And I really liked this. I thought this was definitely one of the better ones. I'm wearing the one from the Too Faced Natural Nudes palette right now and it's just not as good. It's not as good as this one. I have the NYX Glitter Glue here. Oh my goodness. This one took 
308 uses to finish. I bought this back in February of 2019, so it took four and a half years to finish and over 300 uses. And at first I only wore it as a glitter glue, so whenever I was wearing really glittery eyeshadow, and then after a while I wanted to finish it before it expired, so I just used it as an everyday eyeshadow primer. And I did like it. I'm using the one from Ulta right now, and I do prefer this one because it has a little bit of a tint to it. And obviously the glitter glue is a little bit stickier than this one because it's a glitter glue and not just a regular primer. I thought this was really good. If I'm in the market for another glitter glue, I would definitely purchase this one again. I have the NYX Lip Pencil in Sugar Glass. I have talked about this. This was a warmer brown, which I used to really love, but I go for cooler, more mauve lip products now. If you're in the market for a more creamy pencil, uh, I definitely recommend the Slide On Glide On formula from NYX. They have tons of colors, very affordable, but just with how my preferences have changed over the years, I'll stick to the slim lip pencils from also from NYX. And then last I have a foundation here. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin Be Better CC Plus SPF 50 illuminating version of their foundation. The illumination portion of the foundation, I couldn't really notice. I put foundations on the back of my hand and then apply it with a sponge most days. There would be a little bit of a sparkle left on my skin, but it was never something I noticed in real life. I don't really notice a big difference between the illumination version and their regular version. Um, this is definitely like a CC cream type of feel, like it feels thicker. And I do think that if you apply the right amount, it can look very skin-like and natural, but it just did sometimes feel a little bit thick on the skin. I would repurchase this, but I would repurchase it as a mini in the regular formula, and that way I could use it for traveling because I love that this has such a high SPF, and I do really like how it looks. I think I could just put a little bit on my skin and have a little bit more SPF because if I'm on vacation, I'm probably leaving the house more than I do in my regular life. And also with it being a squeezy tube, it won't be a glass bottle that I have while I'm traveling. It really fits in that small aspect of my lifestyle. It's not something I need to get again as a full size. And that is everything. This is still gonna be an incredibly long video. So if you've made it to the end, thank you so much. Uh, let me know if you like this way of doing empties videos where I kind of compare them head to head and tell you which one I like better and why, or if you'd like me to go back to my old way of just having it separated into categories and talking about each product individually. Either way, that's everything I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video.